understand from you abhi jo ongoing trends and challenges chal rahe especially in the real estate domain where do you see the finance investment evolution has gone and how do we see in future what kind of predictions we can see so a lot of development is happening in terms of the sebi guidelines also with respect to financial guidelines with respect to sebi uh, or looking at how investments are monitored with respect to real estate a lot of development is taking place wherein a lot of uh, the af players mm. have entered real estate a lot of uh, uh, money is being raised by the real estate players through debentures and ncds bonds through wealth platforms mm. so what these people do is uh, any real estate developer can raise money from a bank but they can also raise money from retail individuals yeah uh, retail individuals participate in the form of a debenture or a bond mm. whereas in aif they'll have to invest about a crore mm. each individual so there's a lot of action in terms of real estate especially mm. because the uh, tendency of returns mm. is fairly high than yeah. a normal bond so you tend to get returns uh, in the vicinity of 15 to 24% if you invest in real estate uh, based debentures and bonds mm. what are the major challenges do you feel right now especially in the real estate when it comes to these finance investment so what we've been seeing uh, of late is the covid era has mm. affected a lot of the real estate players so a lot of uh, defaults have happened in real estate that is one of the biggest challenges being faced by the real estate industry uh, which was now i mean wherein uh, a lot of real estate players because of covid mm. uh, have faced difficulties so a lot of restructuring is happening a lot of uh, underdeveloped projects are being taken over by the swami fund yeah so government has stepped in government is trying to help out the real estate mm. people in terms of uh, giving them funding and helping them finish off their projects having said that there is a lot of activity from others also like real estate uh, retail participation mm. uh, real estate aifs who have been trying to uh, lend money mm. uh, as debt mm. to the real estate uh, players in india true so as you said abhi kafi ai companies bhi aa gaye now we are seeing even finance investments like reit is there yeah. invite is there we are also seeing lot of fractional ownership is happening so what do you predict in the coming years what more investment can come up in india market especially when we are focusing in real estate market so as a investor who's been uh, investing in fixed deposits mm. and uh, ipos so they have now got multiple new options like the fractional uh, platform uh, regulations that have been recently announced so even a small investor can participate in real estate sure. so he'll uh, participate even with a small amount of 10000 to 50000 so yeah. they also can take a buy out of the real estate high return market the second category is the real uh, real estate ifs Mm. where in the larger hnis can participate with a minimum investment of 1 crore mm. then there are the ncd bond markets where in the real estate uh, participation is coming from a lot of uh, retail investors so the market is opening up day by day yeah for a small investor to a large investor in different forms and categories true so as the market is evolving now even the sebi even the regulatory uh, government bodies are also learning and the regulatory framework is also evolving so based on the kind of regulatory landscape currently is going on what do you feel uh, the kind of challenges are there or what kind of suggestions the government should look into especially when it comes to real estate market so uh, sebi is doing a lot in fact rbi has been also doing a lot uh the banking system had has gone through its own turmoil yeah so the banks have taken a call they've uh, uh, set aside the assets they've gone to arcs in terms of uh, the listed and the unlisted bond markets sebi has played an 
effective and an efficient role in coming out with uh, new guidelines every time and again. And there is a lot of monitoring happening wherever there is listed and unlisted securities that are being issued by the real estate segment. Mm. So a lot of action happening in terms of monitoring from a regulatory perspective. So is there an entry barrier that anyone can enter the market as a trustee or is there a certain uh, regulation for that? So basic regulation requirement is that uh, you need to be having two people in your team mm. who have the background of a trustee while applying for a license. Then there is a fit and proper criteria conducted by the regulator SEBI and you need a net worth currently of 10 crore rupees. After that, uh, the fit and proper criteria, a couple of uh, meetings with SEBI you are then granted a license. So uh, what I have read and uh, understood about Beacon trusteeship is that it is formed by a lot of ex-bankers. Sure. Could you tell our viewers also what are the people behind this uh, you know, vision and who are these people? Sure. So when I started, I was uh, uh, with ING Weiser Bank. So I had to get somebody on board who had the experience of a trustee business. So we got individuals like Mr. Ashok Motwani, who was with IDBI Bank. Then we formed a board of advisors uh, with uh, Mr. Surinder Singh Kohli, who was ex-PNB chairman uh, and IIFCL chairman. Then we got uh, Mr. Deshraj Dogra on board as an advisor, who used to be the CMD for care ratings. Then we got uh, Mr. Sanjay Sinha, who was uh, with Access Trustee. Mm. So when he retired, he joined uh, Beacon. Then uh, we have uh, two, three other gentlemen like Mr. Kostuk Kulkarni. He's been a management consultant. He used to be working in an NBFC. He also joined hands. So uh, that's broadly the, the constitution of uh, Beacon Trustee. So shareholding wise, uh, there is an external shareholder who's uh, come in recently uh, by the name of uh, Mr. Sandeep Agarwal. He uh, has two listed companies on the NSE. He holds about 16% uh, shareholding. Then there are employees uh, who hold about 8 to 10% shareholding. Mm. And the remaining is with me. So it started in uh, 2016. 2016. Okay. <laughs>